Yo, this is Wild Man Wuss here. I'm doing a review of WrestleMania 36, Night 1. Yes, I did say Night 1. Well, we all know the craziness that's going on in the world right now with Corona. Killing off people, making people sick, shutting down everything in the world. But in Vince McMahon world... Ain't no illness going to stop him to do what he want to do. So, instead of postponing it and having WrestleMania somewhere later this year so fans can go see it, he's going to do it anyway. With no crowds. In his performance center. And quiet. Just to have the wrestlers in the ring. Just to say he had WrestleMania no matter what. And honestly, the only thing worth watching on this whole show was AJ Styles versus The Undertaker in their Boneyard match. For real. rest of it was stuff you could have seen on a regular Raw and SmackDown, to be honest with you. It took all the flair out of anybody actually winning any titles because there was nobody there to cheer them on. Most of the matches was average at best. So, some things didn't even make any sense for real. So, to be honest with you, the first match was Cesaro versus Drew Gulak. That only lasted about Four minutes and some change. Of course, you know Cesaro was going to win that match. Only thing cool about the whole match was was his no hands airplane spin. That's about it. Bliss and Cross beat the Kabuki Warriors in a 15 minute match for the women's tag team titles. It was okay. Nothing to get excited over, even though. Honestly, Bliss and Cross should not be beating the Kabuki Warriors because both of them are ten times better wrestlers than both of them. So, that was almost like, why? Elias beat King Corbin. Nobody really cared about that match going in. They had the nerve to be a nine-minute match. Elias won. (laughs) Wasn't even no time to even build up that feud, so that was basically pointless. Becky Lynch beat Shayna Baszler, so basically they build up Shayna to be this monster. And you know how Becky Lynch beat her by just reversing her submission move on her, and (laughs) basically. Set her up and did a basic move on her and won the match. So, they basically build up Shayna Baszler as this killer to just go out like a chump by <laughs> the way Becky Lynch beat her. So, you had Sami Zayn versus Daniel Bryan. I was shocked to see Sami Zayn actually win that match. It was more a bunch of shenanigans more than anything else. And Brian had most of the offense during the whole match. So, the only thing cool about that match was since um, Brian had Gulak and Sammy had um, Nakamura and Cesaro out there making noise. And then you had Gronk and Mojo up on that um, catwalk thing. Doing the yes chant when Daniel Bryan came out. So at least they had somebody in the crowd to make it a little bit exciting. But the match was still like something you could have seen on a Raw and a SmackDown. And they had the <laughs> SmackDown tag team titles in a ladder th- triple threat ladder match. But guess what? It was only one person out of each team because Miz is sick. They could have hold this off on a Raw and a SmackDown. They could have saved that for a live show, too. Because you knew 
going into that match that John Morrison and Miz just got the belt, so you knew Morrison was going to come out of it with the title, but they did it. It looked so stupid and so phony, the way the match ended. They all three fighting for the belts on the hanger. Stupid old Uso and stupid old um, Kofi Kingston fighting over the hanger and not fighting over the actual belt. So, John Morrison had enough sense to grab onto the actual belts so he could fall off the ladder and had the belts in their hand and Kofi and Uso looking like a two jackasses standing up there with an empty hanger in their hand. So kinda made both of them look stupid. So that match was kind that match was pointless too. Kevin Owens versus <laughs> Seth Rollins. Here's the thing that made that look dumb to me. Seth Rollins had already got himself disqualified in the match. Obviously, he didn't want to fight that match, or he wouldn't have got himself disqualified. Kevin Owens talked some crap to him, said, let's make a no disqualification match, and Seth fell for it. And he lost. That was dumb to me on Seth's part. The only cool thing about that match was that Kevin Owens jumped off the WrestleMania sign on the Seth Rollins onto the table. But other than that, the logic in the match was dumb. So, that's, that's what blew me about that. Made Seth look like a, a bucket head. Then you had Goldberg versus Braun Strowman. Everybody knew this match wasn't going to last more than five minutes. And it only lasted about two and some change. It basically was a mini version of Brock and Goldberg for their Universal title match at WrestleMania. Instead of going outside and doing all this and that, what they were doing in that match, basically, Goldberg hit about four spears. Braun got up, hit him about three power slams, and won the match. Now he's the Universal champ. I mean, yeah, no, the. Yeah, the Universal Champion. Yep, that's it. So, basically because Roman Reigns backed out because of health reasons, which is smart, but you know Vince McMahon and weaknesses, he don't believe in you getting sick. So, we have to see what's going on. Roman probably going to be out for a while, and you know how Vince is. He's going to be like, well, Braun stepped up to the challenge. I'm going to keep the belt on him for a while. We'll see how that goes. So, but the match of the night, Undertaker versus AJ Styles in the Boneyard match. This is the only thing really worth watching on this whole show. I will only think it for one thing. It was the ending with the fake hand in the dirt with AJ Styles' glove. On it, and it really looked fake. And they panned to it one too many times, and it looked dumb. But other than that, everything else was cool. The visuals of the match, Undertaking AJ fighting in the dirt, Gallows and Anderson interfering in it, had their druids, Undertaker looking like a badass, beating all of them up. AJ almost had him in the ground, was trying to fight with turning on the um, tractor with the dirt. And Undertaker just popped out of nowhere, and all you see was the lights behind him, looking like something out, out of Hellraiser or something like that. So that was cool to see. The whole visual of most of that sequence was great. The only thing was messed it up. Was the hand at the end. But other than that. That's the only thing worth watching on this whole show. Was that Undertaker part. That's it. If you don't watch anything else. Just watch the last 30 minutes with the Undertaker. And AJ Styles. That's the only thing worth on this whole show. Honestly. Well this is Wildman Will signing off. See you next time.